What's going on guys? Welcome back to another second stimulus check update, stimulus package update, and news report for Thursday, November 12th. Today we have a bunch of news I want to go over and really want to cover. Some of these things include the breakdown of the Senate and how the Senate breakdown is going to ultimately affect stimulus negotiations, stimulus talks, and the ultimate stimulus package moving forward. I also want to address where the second stimulus check is currently at, how much is it going to be, when we could potentially see it, things like that. Also, there are more benefits for people on Social Security. And I want to address this because in 2021, there's going to be increases. And I believe these increases will come across the board. So if you do collect Social Security or you know somebody that does, you may want to stick around for this as well. And lastly, really want to understand where and why President Trump has yet to concede to to Joe Biden and why are Republicans not acknowledging Joe Biden as president elect just yet? These are all very important, extremely important, and these do affect stimulus moving forward. So let's get started. But in order to really understand where stimulus negotiations are going, where we, we need to understand where we are right now. And in order to do that, we first need to understand where things are going as far as the, the Senate runoff over in Georgia. And if you don't know, the Senate is going to come down to one state, and that's Georgia. There are currently four people that are going to be in a Senate runoff, a runoff election come January 5th. Only two of those, pe two of those four people will get a seat. Two of those are Republican, two of those are Democrat. Right now, it looks like it's a toss up. It could be Republicans still remain in control, but in order to really understand, I wanna show you this. So look at this right here. Right now, this is what we know. We're, again, we're missing just two seats, but this is what we know right now, is Republicans have, hold 50 seats. Democrats hold currently 46, but they also have two independents that side with them. So that puts us at 48 to 50. What you need to understand is it comes down to Georgia. Chances are Raphael Warnock is going to win, okay? Raphael Warnock is a Democrat. So this means Democrats will be at 49, Republicans will be at 50. It's gonna come down to the David Perdue and John Ossoff. It's gonna come down to that election. Right now you can see it was 49.7 to 48%. It was a fairly close election, We're about 80, 86,000 votes away or difference, but it's, this could ultimately shift and change the tides. <clears throat> if this does, and the Democrats regain control of the Senate, what you need to understand is that it, it would be a 50-50 split, which means Kamala Harris would be the tiebreaker. She would be the 51st vote as the vice president. And most people don't really understand how this works, but what you need to keep in mind is in the Senate, in order for a bill to pass, it has to have 60 votes in the Senate. However, there is something called a reconciliation uh, that whoever the majority is in the Senate can do this one time per year. And what this means is you do not need 60 votes if you have a reconciliation. You only need 50, You only, or actually 51. You need the majority to get a bill, a bill passed. And right now, experts are anticipating that Democrats would use their reconciliation to pass the largest stimulus package the United States have, has uh, ever seen. And if this happens, then we could potentially see a $2.5 to $3 trillion stimulus package once Joe Biden comes into office. Until then, who knows what we're going to see. <clears throat> now, how is all this going to affect stimulus? Well, it's going to affect stimulus because if Democrats regain control of the Senate, they will pass a larger stimulus package. If Republicans remain in control, which most people anticipate they will, if this happens, then we can expect it's going to be a it's going to be a battle. Nancy Pelosi, uh, Joe Biden, and Mitch McConnell are going to go into battle and negotiate to really determine what is the best package for the American people. If this happens, we potentially will not see stimulus until maybe the end of January, possibly into February. And there's a chance it can go all the way into like March. So this isn't great. <clears throat> Currently, 
Nancy Pelosi, though, is having issues. She's having issues with her Democrats because of stimulus negotiations. And if you remember, okay, just to give you a little bit of backstory, President Trump made stimulus negotiations for Republicans extremely difficult. He made them difficult because every time Steve Mnuchin would come out and, and negotiate with Nancy Pelosi, President Trump would be off tweeting saying, ah, Republicans, go big, go home. Uh, it's coming back to the economy anyway. And so he was always right there. He'd send Steve Mnuchin off to negotiate with Nancy Pelosi. Then he'd sit there tweeting and Nancy Pelosi would look at and Democrats would look at this and be like, well, we, we should just hardline for our $2.4 trillion package because President Trump is saying, go big, go bigger anyway. He wants a larger package. Well, if that's what he wants, that's what we're going to give him. Well, right now, Nancy Pelosi is feeling the pressure because her, her caucus, the other House Democrats, are publicly stating to Nancy Pelosi and to the public that they are urging Nancy Pelosi to take any stimulus package that is offered because the American people need it. They can't wait. They Yes, a $2.4 trillion stimulus package would be great, but at the same time, the American people cannot wait two, three, maybe four months for a stimulus package to finally arrive. So because of that, Republicans on, on this instance are hardlining on their 500 to $1 trillion stimulus package that Mitch McConnell keeps on proposing. And this would mean it's going to drastically change the stimulus results. This would possibly include a $1,200 stimulus check. This would possibly be liability protections, school funding, PPP funding, state and local government funding at a smaller amount, and probably unemployment, a federal unemployment extension, which would be in the ballpark of like two to $300 per week and run for roughly four to maybe eight weeks max. But exactly what does this mean for overall stimulus and stimulus checks? It means some experts are anticipating that if Congress doesn't attach the stimulus negotiation to the government shutdown bill that is that expires on December 11th, then we might not see stimulus until the end of January when Joe Biden ultimately comes into office. Right now, that's not a great thing, but it is currently what many people are predicting and reporting. And one report is indicating that Senate Republicans, as of right now, are not that keen on passing a stimulus package close to or exceeding $1 trillion. And this report is, is saying this because that Republicans are worried that if there's a possibility of them losing control of the Senate, what they don't want to do is pass a $1 trillion stimulus package in, let's say, December, and then they lose the Senate on January 5th, and then Democrats come in at the end of January when Joe Biden you know, finally becomes gets inaugurated and ultimately passes an even larger stimulus package. So they have President Trump, who would pretty much be saddled with that debt. It, that debt would go on his name and his administration, and then you've got Joe Biden who comes in at the end and provides an even larger stimulus package. That's not what Republicans want. They don't want to spend even more money. So because of that, this is why some this report is, is indicating that some Republicans don't want to agree on a large stimulus package yet. And when they say large, they mean a $1 trillion stimulus package just to see Democrats come in and provide even more, which is understandable. Um, you know, Republicans want to, to be very conservative, don't want to just go and spend money for the sake of spending money. They want to put the money where it would be best used. Democrats want to do the exact same thing, but they're willing to spend a lot more and go into a little bit more debt to see the economy will come out of this much sooner. Now, all of this ties into President Trump conceding or not conceding, and when is he going to do it? And why will Republicans not publicly acknowledge Joe Biden as president-elect just yet? These are, these are big, okay? This is very important to understand and know because right now this is affecting everybody. Based on reports, there are actually two reasons for these two things. The first reason is President Trump does not want to concede because once he does, 
he cannot fundraise. If you look at this right here, right now, what they are saying is that President Trump does not want to concede the election because he's trying to raise money for election defense, which is pretty much talking about uh, recounts and voter fraud and all that stuff. And so right now, what, what uh, Reuters is saying, uh, yeah, Reuters is saying is that if anybody donates to the Trump administration to the election defense, this actually goes to President Trump and the RNC, not the election defense pot or program. And it goes on to say that a large portion of the money uh, goes to Save America. And this is a new program or a new uh, Trump's leadership pack or political action committee. It was set up on Monday. And, there, and this would go to uh, that and the Republican National Committee. It says under Federal Election Commission rules, both groups have broad leeway in how they can use the funds. Other reports are saying that what is currently happening is President Trump is using the funds and his campaign sending out mil hundreds, probably millions of emails, tens of thousands of, of emails, millions of emails, tens of emails, tens of millions of emails to people that have voted for him, people that have you know, supported him, you know, donated to his campaign. They're sending out all these emails to request more money, request a, a, a recurring uh, you know, donation to his campaign so that ultimately when he's done, he can use that money to, in some reports are saying pay off debt, and other reports are saying not just to pay off debt, but also to fund his, his you know, priorities like the RNC and other things, and maybe when he decides to run again in 2024. So as of right now, there's many reports saying that he's doing this and that and things are, are not looking quite like the Trump administration is, is saying they are. So, you know, that's, it's crazy, but it is one of the things that's happening. So as of right now, this is one of the reasons why not just he's providing these, these legal issues across the country, but he's trying to recoup some of the money he spent. So we'll see what happens there. But as far as why Republicans will not publicly acknowledge Joe Biden as the president-elect just yet, reports indicate that they will not do this because they are trying to use President Trump and his supporters to propel the, the senator, the Republican senator, um, Kelly Loeffler, in Georgia. <clears throat> so if we look here, um, Politico is stating that that has this report, we need his voters in Georgia. This is why, why Republicans embrace Trump's last stand and will not support or acknowledge Joe Biden as the president-elect. And according to Senate Majority, Senate Majority Whip John Thune out of uh, South Dakota, his quote says this, we need his voters and he has a tremendous following there, specifically talking about Georgia. Right now, he's trying to get through the final stages of his election and determine the outcome there. But when that's all said and done, however it comes out, we want him helping in Georgia. Now, I have, an, I have a little bit of an issue with this. I understand they're going to use him. Even, even um, Joe Biden, President-elect Joe Biden, has stated he will, he will come out and he will um, campaign in Georgia if that's what... Uh, Democrats need him to do. If that is what they think would be best for him, he will come out and do that. And, and that's great. I think that's great that, you know, you can have President Trump and Joe Biden go out and campaign for those senators. That's awesome. But at the same time, for me personally, I was, and you probably remember this, I've been looking forward to the, the election um, for months. And I've been saying I, I'm looking forward to it because the day after the election, all the political games will be done. We will not have to worry about the political stunts, the political games, the bickering back and forth. It will all be about stimulus, the American people moving forward. The problem is, right now, that's not the case. We are still going to see political games, political stunts, posturing over the next two months until the January 5th Senate runoff election. 
in Georgia. So it's ridiculous right now, even though the majority of the country is done. We know who won, who who's going to be in the House, going to be in the Senate. We pretty much know who won the presidency, uh, unless something you know wild just changes. Uh, but so we we have answers. But now everything is coming down to this one specific state, and that, that's why I think it's just crazy in all of this. And so who who really knows moving forward? So, but if that wasn't bad enough, okay, that's bad. But if that wasn't bad enough, we have the IRS coming out and saying that there's a new scam. Okay, there's a new scam. So not only do we have President Trump, you know, sending out emails, even text messages, I believe, emails, text messages, and getting phone calls to help support his his you know election campaign or his um, the kind of recount fund, uh, as you, you know, if that's what you want to call it. He's all that we also got the IRS who's saying, careful, there are there are uh, text messages out there, uh, people that are trying to scam you, just saying that you, uh, you were supposed to get a $1,200 stimulus check. And they're saying, it's out there, be careful. Uh, you know, this could this could happen. And so I've actually, I've actually received uh, two of these messages. Both of these messages were actually on different ones of my phone, different phones of mine. And this is exactly what it said. You have received a direct deposit of $1,200 from COVID-19 Treasury Fund. Further action is required to accept this payment into your account. Continue here to accept the payment. And they'll provide a link and they will send you to um, a phishing website. And on that website, they're just going to try to collect as much information as they can. Your your name, you know, where you live. Uh, they will also try to collect your, your banking information so they know exactly where to send it. Well, this is fake. This is fake. Don't fall for it. Okay? Do not fall for this. And so the IRS is saying, if you do receive one of these, take a screenshot. Take it on your smartphone. Take a screenshot. And send it to phishing at irs.gov. They want to know the date, time, time zone that you received the text message. They also want to know the phone number it came from and your phone number. So they can track all of this. Because the IRS is stating they do not send unsolicited texts or emails. The IRS does not call people with threats of jail or lawsuits, nor does it demand tax payments on gift cards. That's how a lot of these places, a lot of these people, these scammers are are getting money is because they're saying, send us, a, you just go to go to Walmart or go to Best Buy or go to Amazon, buy this gift card, and then you'll just give me the phone, give me the number, and that's how you will pay off your debt. The IRS doesn't do that. It's crazy. Okay, so that's one of the things I just want to address. Don't get scammed. Do not get scammed. That's, that's one of the things that's going around a lot lately, and I don't want you to get scammed. Right? Now, for some more positive news, um, we actually have um, reports, and I, I said this uh, last week, I said it again earlier this week, and I want to say it again today, is that we have reports out right now that Joe Biden and the Biden administration, or technically the Biden campaign right now, are serious and one of their main priorities moving into 2021 is to address social security and give people on social security a little bit more um, of a benefit and so one of the things they want to do is to provide an increase of 200 dollars per month to your social security check now i think that's great that would be a very positive sign but there is there's a lot of people out there saying they're they're getting pushback from republicans saying that providing a $200 per month stimulus to seniors, yes, although it would be great, it would be rather expensive as well. And on top of that, it would be a, it would be, uh, you know, disproportionate based on what you get because it's a flat $200 amount. So, and I just want to put this out there because I know a lot of people right now are saying, well, a $200 per month would be, that would be life-changing for me and what I get on Social Security. But what reports are saying, and I want to I wanna show you this other, this other thing as well, right here. This is something that I talked about um, probably October 15th when it was, a, was initially reported, was that there are um, two, uh, two uh, representatives, both Democrats, one from Oregon, I think the other one's from Connecticut, 
but they want to give a 3% cost of living adjustment to people on social security. Because in 2021, you're actually only going to get 1.3%. So this is technically going to double it. Well, what they're trying to do is they tried to pass this. It actually went into the house. Um, I don't even know if it went to vote um, or if it passed the house. I, I, I can't remember, you know, a month ago uh, what really happened there. Uh, but they knew if it, even if it passed the house, it wasn't going to do anything in the Senate. It was going to go to the Senate and pretty much just die. Well, that's technically what it did or what it would have done. And so what they're saying is that in, if this were to happen for people on Social Security, if the Biden administration is serious, they could do like a mix. Instead of doing $200 or 3%, they could do something like instead of just a dollar amount, like 200, 100, 150, something like that, they could do like a, a 5% increase or a, yeah, let's say a 10% increase on your social security benefit. So if for the average person, I'll just say the average social security uh, recipient or beneficiary, you would receive uh, based on reports, it's like $1,503. So $1,503. If you saw a 10% cost of living adjustment just for 2021, that means you would receive a $150 increase Instead of just the 1.3, the 1.3% is going to provide you with like a like a $20 increase, very little, right? But if you receive a, a 10% increase, that's $150. That's not bad, right? That's, that's quite a bit more than you're receiving before. So that's why they're saying, and I just want to point this out, that there could be a mix of anywhere between the 3% and the $200 per month um, stimulus to people on Social Security. So that is a good benefit there. I think that's it's important to know that this could happen. And I get it. Okay, I honestly get it. It's not a huge sum of money, but it would help and it would provide a, a huge benefit to people on Social Security. So at least it's something. Now let's get to the COVID news because this is ultimately going to affect stimulus. Okay. And I really want to put this out there because it's scary to look at, but I want to put it out there because it's crazy to see how much the COVID cases have changed over the past couple months. Look at this, okay? And you can you can go to Google and you can do this exact same search. I do this every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, depending on you know if I remember the number or not. This is by Johns Hopkins University. I just type in Johns Hopkins University new COVID cases US. This is the first thing that pops up. Yesterday, on Veterans Day 2020, November 11th, we saw in the United States 142,856 new cases of COVID. The previous record was November 6th of 132,000. Actually, it was the day before that, I, th I think. Yeah, November 10th, 139,000. 746 so the number just keeps going up my prediction is probably today or tomorrow we will see this number exceed 150,000 and my prediction is probably on Thanksgiving week we will see this number increase to over 200,000 cases per day the amount of deaths is not actually terrible yesterday we saw 1,431 1, deaths uh, compared to um, the 142,856 COVID cases. I just want to point that out because as of right now, many states are starting to shut down. Uh, you know, cities, not states. They're starting to shut down temporarily. They're starting to um, modify dining, bars, gatherings, uh, movie theaters, which are mostly closed down, uh, you know, just, just any any type of entertainment space. A lot of these cities are pretty much banning it or restricting the amount of time that you can actually be open. San Francisco is limiting stuff. Um, Nevada has a high likelihood of shutting down in just two weeks. Um, Chicago, New York, uh, New Jersey, a lot of places are that are considered somewhat hotspots are starting to shut down. One of the things I recommend personally 
is to obviously wear a mask. Uh, a lot of times I will wear a cloth mask, okay, which really does very little. It helps a little bit, but it doesn't do a whole lot. So in most cases, I will wear a surgical mask, which I always carry a whole box of these in my car, keep some at my house, keep some at the office as well. I will take this, I will take a cloth mask, I will double it, put it over, okay? And so that's a lot of times what I would do. Or instead of a surgical mask, um, if I'm going to a place where there's a lot more people, I will wear uh, an N95 mask and I will cover that up with a some type of cloth mask as well. So I highly recommend you wear a mask, social distance if you can, spread out, wash your hands, uh, just try to stay healthy. Do what you can to stay healthy because right now, that's all you can. You should really be worried about is just staying healthy, trying to provide for yourself and your family and just getting through this pandemic together. So just want to thank you guys for watching this stimulus check update, stimulus package update and news report for Thursday, November 12th. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Consider subscribing so I can keep you updated on all things stimulus and I will see you guys on the next one.